Thank God for his living word. We're still continuing teaching on the end times, the end of the age. And um, we were answering a very, last session I told you a very silly question, but we're giving it a very intelligent answer. Okay? Um, <clears throat> the question that we saw on, on the social media platform was, is Jesus God? And we were looking at scriptures to answer this question in a very intelligent way that you would be so strong in faith after we are done with it, we've been after we are done with this lesson that you would be so confident that Jesus Christ is God. You understand? So so we were reading from John chapter the Gospel of John chapter 1 from verse 1 onwards. So we're not done yet with that uh, segment of scripture because uh, this is life changing. All right? And I know some people read the Bible, but they speed read their Bible. And, uh, or they pick out certain verses from the Bible and quote it. But the Bible is always written in context. You understand? So we, it, it, it supports, each verse supports the other verse. Right? So we have to read it as a whole in order to get the full message. So my prayer for you is that you would get deep into this thing, just like I've gone deep into it, and I'm bringing out some truth and I'm sharing it with you and people on the social platforms where this message is going. I might pray for them too, is that they will be enlightened with the Word of God and they will really have this deep reverence for Jesus Christ in their lives. So, let's go back to John chapter 1, verse 1 and read again, alright, and then start, try to uh, um, highlight a few important points I might have skipped, you know, in the last uh, sessions we've been doing. So, let's go ahead and read from John chapter 1, verse 1 from the New King James translation of the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. So nobody knows when the beginning was, right? No one has what it takes to know when the beginning was. But whenever that was, in the beginning was the word. All right? And the word was with God, and the word was God. All right? So verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. So you, you cannot relate to a word as he. Because words have no gender. So the scripture is not talking about words. It's talking about a person. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning. So it's talking about a particular person. Alright? He was in the beginning with God. And that he, yeah, is talking about Jesus Christ. Right? He was in the beginning with God because Jesus Christ himself is the word of God. So we'll, as we read, we'll get to know better. Let's keep going. Verse 3. All things, all things were made through him. All right? And without him, nothing was made that was made. So in other words, there was nothing, nothing created without Jesus Christ. So all things were made through him. Alright? And without him, nothing was made that was made. So everything was made through him and for him. we we'll look at that as we go. First, next verse. In him, in Jesus Christ was what? What's that word? Life. life. So where was life? It wasn't Jesus Christ. Before life was released into the world, life was in Jesus Christ. Are you listening? In him was life, and the life was what? The light of men. So in other words, the life that was in Jesus Christ was actually the word light here is talking about the spirit of men. Now, if you understand a, a human being, a human being is not one uh, entity. A human being is, is a three-entity human being. Are you listening? 
All right? But when we look at a person, we look at his or her body. And this is the person. This is the physical part, right? The body is a, like a, it's a, like a, it's a house, basically. That someone lives inside of it. So the real person is not the body. The real person is that spirit, which is this light. You understand? This light, the spirit, is actually that real person. So when someone passes away, what, does, what do the people say? He's not here, he's gone. But here, here's his body, yeah? What are they saying when they say someone is gone? But you can say, well, here they are. No, it's not this person. This is only the house he or she lived in. This light, the spirit, left him. It's either gone to heaven or elsewhere. Hell. Right? So, in him, in Jesus Christ was life, and the life was the light of men. So, in other words, the life of every human being came through Jesus Christ. People can claim what they want to claim. People have their own ideas about and their own philosophy about life. Some people even have their own theology. But the truth prevails. At the end of the day, truth will prevail. Truth always comes out and shows itself and proves itself. It might take generations, but eventually we will see the truth. And what is the truth? That no human being comes to this planet without life from Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what religion they belong to. Jesus Christ is a source of life. In him was life. Right? And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. So I'm going a little bit slow in this session so that you would not miss this. Alright? I covered some of it in the last sessions. But I'm going a little slow now. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. So in other words, the life that, was, that is in Christ, which is the light of men, the spirit of men, is inside. Every baby that is conceived has this light in them. Every baby becomes a living being because of this light. All right? The, the, every human being is born in darkness because of the fall of Adam, because of the sin of Adam. Every human being born into this world is born in darkness. So that darkness does not comprehend that light, that, that light. In other words, it doesn't understand the light and it can't overpower that light, even though it is darkness, but the darkness cannot comprehend it, cannot understand it. That's the meaning of the word comprehend. It cannot understand that light, cannot overpower that light. It cannot, it cannot rule over that light, even though that child or that baby is born in darkness. All human beings on this planet after Adam came in darkness, came into this world in darkness, but that light inside of them was the life that was given to them through Jesus Christ. See how great this is, how wonderful it is. All right? So verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is not Jesus. Now this scripture is not talking about somebody else. Now if you have any questions, this is like a, this is a classroom, right? You can't walk out of here ignorant. You can raise your hands and ask me the question and answer it. I'm not an ignorant teacher of the word. <laughs> I'm properly schooled. So you can ask me a question, I'll answer it. All right. So there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is not talking about John the Baptist. All right. Verse, next verse. This man came for a witness. To bear witness of the light. To bear witness of Jesus Christ the light. That all through him might believe. That means all through Jesus Christ might believe. Not all through John now. John came as a forerunner, as a witness of that light that, 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 is, that will come into the world. That Jesus, he came before Jesus. He was born before Jesus. He was uh, um, biologically six months older than Jesus. Right? Uh, born six months before Jesus was born to the earth. So he is a little older and he started his ministry quite early and the purpose of his ministry was to bear witness of the light, okay? That all through uh, people might believe in God through that light. So, verse 8, he was not that light, okay? John was not that light. 
but was sent to bear witness of that light. So if you study what the message is that John the Baptist used to preach, it was only about Jesus. It was only about the light. It's only about the coming Messiah, the Savior, all right, and everything that had to do with Jesus Christ. All right, verse 9. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Can you see that? That was what? The true light which gives light to every man. In other words, give the spirit, the life, which is the spirit of man, to every man who comes into the world. So nobody is ever born in the human race or in any, all of God's creation, even in the animals. No one is ever born without Jesus. No one is ever born without everything that is born with life. That life comes from Jesus Christ. So in this matter, we're not focusing on God's creation, other creation. We're focusing on humanity. Because God's, the human creation of God is not like all the other creations. It's different. You understand? Uh, when God created all the other creations, what he did? He spoke them. Let there be, and there was. He spoke the cows, and the goats, and the sheep, and the fowls, and everything into being, the fish, the birds. He just spoke and these things just happened. And those, when he spoke it, it was word. And that word was Jesus Christ. So in other words, Jesus Christ was responsible for giving life to every living thing on the planet. God made sure that every living creature of his will get life, but that life will come through Jesus Christ because he was God's word in heaven when God was speaking it out. He was the word. All right, so that, uh, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Now, as you know, animals do not have a soul. Some people are ignorant about that. Animals don't have a soul. Animals operate, they operate with the sixth sense, with, with, the, uh, with, the, with the sixth sense. So, so they can learn things. You understand? The, uh, human, the human race is not like that. We have a soul. We are the only creation of God that has a soul. All right? Mind, will, and emotion. That is why you can kill an animal and eat it. Because it has no soul. But man has a soul which is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And he has a spirit that lives in this body, that gives life to this body. So when the spirit leaves this body, the body dies. There's no more reason to exist. So that life we are, is what we are talking about. So that was the true light which gives light or life to every man coming into the world. Verse 10. He was in the world. Jesus Christ was in the world. And the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. How are you like that? Because of the ignorance of the people. But more especially because of the devil that clouds the minds of people. Up to today, the devil clouds the minds of people. Why? Because they cannot understand who Jesus Christ is. He doesn't want them to understand who Jesus Christ is. He doesn't want them to know that Jesus Christ is a life giver. All right? So he was in the world. Jesus Christ came to the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Verse 11. He came to his own, his own creation, and his own creation did not receive him. You know, all based on ignorance, I'll tell you the truth. The, uh, even up until today, in 2024, I can still tell you there's so many ignorant people in this world, and in the church as well. Uh, ignorant about truth, ignorant about who Jesus is. They don't know really who he is. If you ask them who is Jesus, well, he's the Son of God, or he is my Savior, or he's, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you what they believe. But they don't fully understand that Jesus Christ is God. And when he came to the earth, he, he created the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not receive him. And now he came to his own, to his own people, to the human race, and his own did not receive him. But when you go back to the Jewish nation, as I mentioned in the last session, I don't have time to, to recap that, but just so that you would know, he came, was birthed into, this, uh, into the world through 
the Jewish nation, which God prepared for generations, and they, you know, uh, delivered Jesus to the planet, you know, as a baby, and God, that's what God wanted. Uh, so the Jewish nations, the purpose of the Jewish nations, well, no nation was to deliver Jesus Christ to the earth. But in the process of them being nurtured and developed and trained and uh, by God, God made many, many promises to them in the process. So God is still keeping their promises because he's a God of his word, you understand? One, it cannot be revoked. God's promises cannot be revoked. So when God promised Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, when God promised Moses and Aaron, when God promised David and Isaiah and all of these people, uh, the promises that he made for that nation, he's keeping the promises up to today. Those are the most stiff-necked, hard-hearted, calloused-hearted people in the world. But God is still keeping his promises to them because God made the promises, not because they're such good people. Are you listening? That is how God is to all of us. Not like we are, you know, we really are troubles. You know, know what we're doing sometimes. Most of the time we don't really don't know what we're doing. But we still have the love of God because of his promise. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God's promise that is. Understand? We can't walk around as if we did it, you know, because of us, because how good we are. Oh, no. we don't qualify for anything. But God made a sacrifice through His Son so that we can be qualified through what Jesus Christ did. So when He looks at us right now, when our Father in Heaven looks at us right now, He sees the blood of Jesus Christ upon us, cleansed. So it's quite important for you to know this. So He came to His own, His own did not receive Him, because His own did, did not know Him. Next verse, please. But as many as received Him, listen to this. But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name. That's it. That's it. That's the whole message. All right. But as many as received Him, that He was he His God, He is the Son of God. To them He gave the right to become children of God. Aren't everyone on the planet children of God? Yes. All, everyone on this planet. Psalm 24, David says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in the world and the earth belongs to God and even all who live in it belongs to God. But not all receive Him, you see. Are you listening? Everyone belongs to God. But to those who receive Jesus Christ and believe in Him, they become children of God. So there's a transition here now from the natural to the supernatural. There's, a, there's, a, there's something that takes place in the life of a person who acknowledges, hey, Jesus Christ is Lord, he's God. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power, he gave, he gave, he gave them the right to become the children of God. The, the other, uh, old King James says he gave them the power to become children of God. In other words, you have a right as a child of God to those who believe in his name. Do you believe in his name? You have a right to be a child of God. You, have a, you are a child of God. I don't care what the devil in his hell is saying. As long as you believe in him, you're a child of God. And there are benefits and privileges which you need to get to know, which are actually the promises of God made for you. Verse 13. Who were born not of blood, all right, Jesus Christ was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So the birth of Jesus Christ was not the will of man. It wasn't because two people decided to get married, you know, a man and a woman got married and they decided to have a child, like it happens, you know, in life. That was not how Jesus was born. Are you listening? When Jesus came into the world, it was God the Father's will. But Jesus was not born through natural conception. Jesus was born through Holy Spirit conception. So the young woman that God spoke to or sent angel Gabriel to speak to, her name was Mary. She was a young virgin. As she, they estimate her age to be about 14 or 15 years of age. When that angel came and spoke to her, and she was, you know, I mean, when an angel comes to you, you get frightened. Every, anyone would fear an angel because they're not small beings, you know, they don't look small and tiny like us. So, see, she saw and she, be, the, Gabriel said, Mary, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Because you have found favor with God. Me? Favor? You must understand she was a little nobody living in a village in Nazareth, uh, in Bethlehem. And uh, that's where she was. She was a little nobody. But she comes from the bloodline of David. Are you listening? And God chose her at that appointed time and sent angels to, angel to tell her that she's going to have a baby. And she says, how can I have a baby? I'm not married yet. He says, no, no, no. You don't have to be married to have this baby. The Holy Spirit, God's presence will come upon you and plant a seed in your womb. And this baby shall be of the Holy One of God. So in other words, this is not through natural conception. All right? It's through God's power that Mary, the seed was planted. So Jesus was conceived. He was not born of blood. All right? He was not born... Of the, because of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but he was born of God you have to believe that because it is very very important for every human being on the planet to actually believe that Jesus Christ came 100% in the flesh alright I'll talk to you about that later on uh, let's, uh, let's go to the next verse and the word became flesh Listen to this, that word, same word, which was in the beginning with God. You understand? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That word now became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Talking about Jesus Christ. So is the word of God, is the living word of God. When God spoke, he was the one, who was the life that was given to the creation and to humanity. Then this word took on a body. It became flesh inside the womb of a virgin. Are you listening? All right. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So he was born into the world just like a natural birth. Our, our baby will be born. And we beheld his glory. And in other words, we, understand, we understood who he was. His glory means His fullness. So we understood who He was. He was the Son of God. The promise that God made that He will send a Messiah. He will send a Deliverer to this world. He will come and set humanity free again from the fall of Adam, from the uh, clutches of the devil. And we beheld His glory. And the glory was of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Wow, you know how powerful that is. The only begotten of the Father. As you're reading, you'll get to know this. Verse 15. John bore witness of him. Alright, talk about, again about John the Baptist. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, this is what John says now. He's saying this to the people. This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was what? Before me. Are you listening? So Jesus Christ did not just come into existence the day he was born on earth. He was already in the beginning with God. He was God. And he was with God. And he was God. And he, being the word of God, God sent his word to the world. But he can't just send his word without a body because nobody can relate to a word without a body so he gave him a flesh body and sent him all right so john is saying you know get this straight now at one time jesus jesus was talking to some of the jews now you would think that this this nation with so much god gave to them with so much of knowledge so many prophets so much of writings so much of history, all of that they had, you'd think that this would be the wisest nation on the earth. No, no, no. They were having a chat with Jesus, all the Pharisees, I don't know, the Sadducees, I think, and all the people, and they were questioning him about his existence. And they're saying, now, who are you? We are children of Abraham. <laughs> he says, you know what? Your father Abraham, he was waiting to see my day. In other words, your father Abraham was also waiting for me to come to the earth. That's what he was actually saying to them. So you know Abraham. 
You are not yet even 50 years of age, they told him. And you claim to know Abraham. You know what his reply was? Before Abraham was, I am. They couldn't understand that. I mean, a carnal mind cannot understand spiritual things. Why do you think people criticize? Because they have a carnal mind. You can't, you, you can't um, understand spiritual things. When people are stuck in the threshold of the natural and everything about their life is natural or it's secular or it's carnal, then you come out with a spiritual truth. You think they're going to make head or tail of it? You think they're going to understand it? I doubt. Are you listening? So these people understood and they tried to understand Jesus, but they dissect everything he said with a carnal mind. A carnal mind is a troublesome mind. You understand? And it can cause no damage to Jesus Christ, but it will cause damage to the person who has that carnal mind. Either carnal mind or that secular mind. Okay, but they're not the same. I don't have time to describe that to you, but it's not the same. Alright? So John is saying, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So in other words, my, my, my call on the earth and my work time is limited. I'll do this here and I'll go. But he came... He will do his work on the earth, and even when he leaves the earth and go back to heaven, his work here will continue. That basically is preferred before me. That's what John actually meant. Verse 16. And of his fullness, and of his fullness, we have all received, and grace for grace. This is important for you to understand, right? It's a simple verse of scripture, but it's not as simple to understand. Let me just break it up for you. And of his fullness, that means of his glory, we have all received. So in other words, Jesus was full of everything. God put everything in him. Life, light, creation, source. Everything. He was, he was it. In other words, if I have to put it in layman's term to you, Jesus Christ was the container that held everything that God wanted. For creation, for the earth, for all the galaxies, for, for life. He was it. So... Uh, and of his fullness, we have all received. In other words, nobody, none of God's creation ever received anything from anywhere else. That is the reason why the devil cooked up a big lie called evolution. You understand? A big bang theory. There was a big bang, but that wasn't uh, the big bang they're talking about. You understand? There was probably a big bang. Because I don't think God created the earth and the heavens and all the galaxies very silently. You understand? I don't think he did it very silently. I think he was just bold about what he was doing and it, things just happened. Imagine all of a sudden, here's the earth full of darkness and cold. And he said, let that be. And the sun just out of his mouth. Do you think it was done silently? I don't think so. There might have been a big bang. But it's not what they say. How life started on earth, how where life started, and all of that. Do I look like a monkey to you? <laughs> a bunch of dummies. But that's a lie the devil cooked up centuries ago. People still study that and follow that up to now. But if you go, there's so many, if you go into that study, there's so many loopholes to realize the complexity of man. How complex is man? Do you know right now nobody can really figure man out? Are you aware of that? Even the psychologists, what they can do is study your behavior pattern. Study how you sit. Study of how you fold your hands. Study of how you walk. They can study your behavior patterns and link it to somebody, uh, something rather in your life. Why now? They're trying to, trying to figure you out, but they can't. I know, I did a bit of uh, study, psychology, and I'm telling you the truth. Uh, the human being, a human being is not an easy person to understand. It's not easy. We might understand the body. That's why doctors and professionals and specialists go and study. So they understand a certain thing about the body or certain things. The spirit we can easily understand because we just discussed that now. It came from Jesus Christ. But the soul, the soul is complex. The mind, how it thinks, 
The will. The decisions that we make is based on that will. What about the emotions? What, what, there's so many emotions in, in, a, in a human being. There's about 23, I believe. Emotions. Our reactions to a certain thing. When you're happy, it's an emotion. When you're sad, it's an emotion. When you're angry, it's an emotion. There's about 23 of that in every individual, every human individual. So maybe a psychologist might understand certain things. I know, as I think I mentioned to you years, many, many years ago, there was a young man that was going through some very difficult time in his life. And they sent him to a psychologist. They sent him to a psychiatrist. And they, they tried to read this young man. They tried to read him and they took him on sessions and it cost the family a lot of money. These people can charge up to a thousand rands an hour. So someone called me, uh, a cousin of mine called me and told me, you know, there's a young man in, in Tongat. You need to help him because the, his father is a pastor. He asked me if I know someone can help him. I told him, yes, my cousin can help him. So please help this boy, make some time. When can you start? So I felt sorry for him. He's a young man. He was like in his you know, early 20s. He was a song leader in the church. He was a musician. My heart went out to him. I said, okay, certain day, certain time. So I met with him for five Mondays in the evening for about two hours each. You know, I, as I said, you know, I, I know psychology. I did some studies. So I wasn't using psychology that day because someone already used psychology and they couldn't read him. I was depending on God, the Holy Spirit in me. I was depending on God's word. And in five days, it didn't cost the family a single cent. This boy was delivered by the fifth day. He was perfect. He was back in church. He was back into worship. He was back into music. And one week later, his father phoned me. He said, Pastor, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, I just want to know, what did you do to my boy? I said, why? He says, hey, this boy is actually better than what he was. He's so involved in church now and, I mean, you can just see he's so bright and he's so beautiful and he's so... I, how did I get that victory? I'm not taking that glory. That glory goes to my Lord and my King. It was the Holy Spirit in me. That is why I'm saying to you, if you think in this natural world people can figure out a human life and tell you what it is, uh -uh. their knowledge is limited. Their human life is too complicated. <laughs> So let's get back to this verse of scripture. We went very far from him. All right. And all of his fullness, we have all, from all of his fullness, we have all received. Everything we receive, the breath of life, the oxygen that we breathe, life, our heartbeat, our blood flow in our body. Everything came through Jesus Christ. Listen to this last part. And grace for grace. You know what that means? It means that whatever the Lord Jesus Christ brought to deliver to the earth, whatever he gave to humanity, that day when life was created, it was all based on what? On grace. What is the word grace? Favor. You see, you've got two things here now. You've got the old covenant where the Jewish nation come from. And they got laws. Laws. Through that law, you understand? Through that law, okay, there was no grace. So, but yes, talking about grace in this verse of scripture, grace for grace. So in other words, grace only comes to those people that acknowledge, acknowledge Jesus Christ. Are you listening? So let, let's continue to read it because it, 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 it clarifies itself. Verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. Yes, it is. For the law was given through Moses. Right? But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Are you aware of that? You need to know this. The law was given to Moses. There's no grace in law. The law is, if you break the law, you suffer the consequences. That's the law. Are you listening? But grace is when you, when you do something wrong. When you do something wrong, you have forgiveness. God's grace covers you. So, the law was given through Moses where there's no grace. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So, in other words, 
Grace comes to you through Jesus Christ and truth comes to you. Say this after me. Say, I am free. free. Say, I am free. am free. By the grace and by the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am free. All has to do with freedom. One more verse. Verse 18, please. No one has seen God at any time. Right? No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So in other words, Jesus Christ is not a separate entity. He is not another God. He is the Son of God. He is actually part of God. He is in the bosom of the Father. I know many, many theologians claim that Moses saw God face to face. No, he didn't. No, I know there's a scripture in the Bible that says that as well. So they claim that Moses had a face-to-face encounter with God. What did God tell Moses? If I show you my glory, Moses, you'll die. No one can see God and live. Only because God is so holy. All right? And God's holiness demands justice and righteousness. So in the light of God's holiness, every sin must be punished. That's why Jesus Christ came. He paid the price for the sin so that we won't get punished for the sin. Are you listening? So we now have free entry to go to God as we come to his throne of mercy and grace. Not because we are so good. It's because through the blood, through the sacrifice, Jesus Christ has made. The complete work that Jesus Christ has done. It gives us that freedom to come. So Jesus Christ came to the earth and he said this many times to the Jews and they just could, couldn't get it. He says, I came from the Father. Huh? I came from the Father. Now coming back to Moses, let me just clarify this. There's a word in the, old, uh, in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, uh, it, it, it's pronounced as panim, P-A-N-I-M. All right, that word, um, so in other words, it says, this is what it's saying. The scripture that says that Moses uh, saw God face to face, Moses saw God, God's presence, because that's what the word panin means. God's presence is God's face, or God's face is God's presence. Not face to face as we look at each other's face. You can't do that. Only Jesus Christ, who came from the bosom of the Father. Now imagine when he hung on the cross. Imagine that. Think about that. When he hung on the cross. Here you got the word of God, the son of the living God, came from the bosom of the Father to the earth and became sin in humanity's place. The Bible says God took all the sins of the earth, past, present and future, and placed it on me on him on the cross because he was now the lamb that will be sacrificed. Can you believe that? But what happened in that moment of time when, when that happened? God turned his back on him. Why? Why did God turn his back on him? The Bible says God, for, God forsook him on the cross for a moment. Why? Because God's holiness will not permit God to look at sin. So Jesus Christ became the son of the world. And when that happened, God turned his back on him. Because he couldn't look at sin. This is why I'm trying to teach you, church. If you only get a little glimpse of God's holiness, it'll put a godly fear in you. Many Christians do not have a godly fear in them. They think that anything goes, anyhow, anywhere. They can do what? They can say what? You know, they have westernized. Christianity to such a degree that it's lost all of its essence. <clears throat> Everything is gone. It's now degraded. And the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, is being dragged in the mud. The people use his name as a swear word. And you sit and watch those movies. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine that. So God's holiness will not permit God to even look at sin and Jesus was forsaken on the cross 
up until the time he died. Understand? Now listen, there was another time he was saying to the disciples, he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Why? Because he himself knew what that experience was when he was on the cross. What it meant to be forsaken by God. He experienced that on the cross. Our Lord and our Saviour. I wish we could continue, but we have to stop the session here. But I'm saying this here to you. When you look at Jesus, you're looking at God. Are you listening? When you look at Him in your, in your mind's eye or in your spiritual life, through your spiritual heart, you're looking at God in all of His splendor and glory and holiness. And the same God came. Jesus came from the bosom of the Father. He came to display the love of God. He came to tell humanity, hey, your daddy loves you, man. He loves you. He loves you to such a point that he, he sent me to die for you so that he, your sins will be washed. And I'll connect you back to the Father. We are all connected back to the Father. Again, not because of religion, not because of one pastor somewhere, one prophet somewhere, whoever. We are connected back to the Father because of what Jesus Christ did. And I accept that and I receive that for myself. That is why I'm connected to the Father. That is why God's presence go with me everywhere. That is why I live in His glory. I love what I'm doing as a man of God. I love what I'm doing. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm a love slave to Him. There's nothing else I can do with my life. So I'm so much into this. That everything, every day, every moment of the day belongs to Him. You understand? Now this is how it is. When you get into this relationship with God, your Father, your Daddy... You don't have to hype yourself up unnecessarily. You don't have to do, you know, some funny things some people do. All daddy wants is for you to be able to sit down and have a talk with him. But you couldn't have the talk, you see. Now you can have the talk because of what Jesus Christ is son did. Before that, you need a prophet. You need a priest. You need to go make a sacrifice. You need to go to the temple like they went in the old covenant. You need to go and shed blood at the temple. You need all that for you to have that privilege to talk to God. Now you don't need all that. Why? Because the Son of God who came from the bosom of the Father became the Lamb of God. Sacrifice for you and for me. Are you listening? So you can just sit somewhere quietly and just have a chat with your father. Tell him about your life. Not that he doesn't know, he knows. But it has to come out of your mouth because there's power in words. You understand? I'm not talking about believing, just believing inside of you. Believing inside of you has no value. But what you believe inside of you, if you take it out through your mouth and you give it words, it becomes powerful. It becomes powerful. So you must understand in this world, Jesus said, you will find tribulation. Why? Because there's a real enemy here. There's a devil here that eats your guts. He, he hates every human being. He hates even, even those that don't know Jesus. He still, he hates them. But they don't know that. They're thinking that he is their pal. No, no, he, he, is, he, he, he is a frog. He's a snake. He's, he's got a fucked up. He's a liar. Jesus called him a liar. You understand? So the world thinks, no, he's their pal. He's not their pal. He's going to take them to hell. That's what he's doing. He's being subtle. He's lying to them because he's going to take them to hell. He's a real enemy of the human race. But your father still loves you. Jesus Christ came and he died for you because of the love of the father. So I'm saying... Easy to connect to with God because you don't have to come with any sacrifice. All you need to just sit there somewhere quietly and say, Jesus, everything what this pastor said is true. I know it's true. I want you to cleanse me with your blood, wash me. And God, my Father, this is my life. You know, that's what you must do. People leave out certain things. Don't leave out anything. Do you know that is the secret of praying? I'll give you one example. Many years Many, many years ago, I think in the 80s, 82, 83, I was busy studying. I was already in college, studying correspondence at the time. I was still at the secular work. Um, and then uh, I had a lot of time in man, so I used to study, and I was busy studying. And then one day, um, 
heard the voice of God speak to me and told me a few things. And one of the things that I had to study a lot was, the, was prayer. Because some people pray and it's not real. You know it's not real. They're making that prayer up. Prayer is not that. Prayer is what you're talking to God from your heart. It's how you're feeling, what's going on inside of you. You, you don't have, you, some people got special words when they pray and they got special words when they talk to people. They got different words. You know when they talk to people, they talk like a human being. When they talk to God, they want to talk like a superhuman being. God don't want that. He wants you to be you. If it's hurting, tell him it's hurting. If you trouble, tell him he wants that. I was studying, as I was studying, and I spent quite a bit of time studying on prayer. And I went extensively into it. So as I was studying, I think, I think it's Psalm 59. I came there and the Lord exposed something to me. You know David, what a powerful king. What a powerful relationship with God this man had in Psalm 59. Someone was troubling him. I mean, there were people out there that was giving David a real, real hard time. You understand? They were doing bad things. They were looking out to kill him. And, you know, David was upset this one day. It's okay to get angry, you know that? Anger is not sin. It's what you do in anger that's sin. All right? People get upset, so it's okay. So after you get don't do anything wrong when you get angry, but that will be sin. But David got upset here because of what they were doing to him. And he says, Lord, look at these people. And if you read this Psalm 59, I think it is, where the prayer is recorded. He says, Lord, look at these people. They're acting like young lions. They want to devour me. I'm asking you to break their teeth in their mouth. David actually said that. So when I looked at that closely and I said, wow, David was being real. Some Christians are unreal. Even when you hear them praying, I mean, it's like a... <laughs> It's a total, I don't know, fraud before God. They're not real. You need to be real. You need to talk to God in reality. Sit down and tell him where it's paining. Sit down and tell him what's happening. Sit down and tell him what you're sick and tired of. Sit down and tell him where you need him. Sit down and tell him what intervention you need. Sit down and tell him that you want your life to be put right. Let me tell you something. No one else can help you. Only God, your Father, can help you because He has what it takes.